Miss Gilman. Elizabeth Gibson. Obviously, I'd like to extend my deepest sympathies to you all at this time. Now, please, if there's anything you need, anything at all, I presume you all have your own liaison officers by now. Now, we're still at the very early stages of a painstaking investigation. And as you can imagine, we're facing an enormous task. But my officers are working night and day. You can be assured of that. Now... <coughs> Excuse me, would it be possible for me to ask a question, please? Yes, certainly, Mr Gallagher. <coughs> I think what we all want to know here is when will you be pressing charges against the men who did this? As I say, we're still at the very early stages of a very difficult inquiry. What I can say is we're making good progress. We're doing everything we can. Uh, we're trying to do our best. Do you know who did it? Well, obviously, we're all aware the real IRA has claimed responsibility. I mean the actual people. I know the organisation. We're asking if you know their names. We've... I have an idea of some of them. We're getting into a sensitive area here. Look, I want prosecutions as much as you do. But the problem is evidence. Hard information. OK. Uh, we received your letter, but to be honest, sympathy is not enough. It's a great start, please, exactly. Um, whilst we understand... Uh, Sensitive nature of the inquiry. Things may be sensitive. Yes, but we need to know why there haven't been any charges. Yes, I Yeah, I know, but they can't have arrested them for no reason, can they? What about the police? Oh, well, they acknowledge that an explosion did occur and is the subject of an investigation. I mean, we've asked for a full briefing, but so far we're not getting very far. On the arrests, I mean, we already know that they've all been released. Jesus' sake. The churches have been very good, and the local community groups. But it's not great. Very observant of you, Michael. Okay, look. We could sue them ourselves. The real IRA, the 32 County Sovereignty Committee. All of them. They exist, don't they? They have assets, money, money coming in from America. But we need evidence. And we'll get evidence. They did it with O.J. Simpson, OK? Uh, once he was acquitted, her family sued for damages and they got a verdict. That's the point. Christ, if every victim of the trouble started suing a paramilitary group, where would it end? Almost so support what I'm saying is it's possible. Even if they prosecuted one of them, it would be a start. Look, if we did this, there's a chance we could put them out of business for good. He's got a point. How much would it cost us? A million, a million and a half. Oh, what are we going to fight that kind of money? We raise it, Stanley. We open a fund, start an appeal. Well, that'll take years. Years to even make a start. Somebody what called. Is... Says he knows who they are. What? What do you mean? Michael, what do you mean? We've got the names. Who was it? Who was that? He didn't say who he was. Thought it, eh? Okay, everybody, we'll be there in about five minutes. So we'll go to the front entrance. Let's be sure and keep together and retain our dignity, okay? Excuse me. Can you explain to me? 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 Can you explain to
the night. Just organizers of the Omaha. Murderers. How long are you going to protect them? You killed our sister. Why are you protecting them? You're already here to ask these questions. 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 You're already
That's the only way we're going to deal with this. Mr. Adams, my brother was murdered by an IRA gunman in 1984. No witnesses came forward for that either. So they got away. So I agree with you. Let's put the past behind us. That was my brother then. But this is my son now. The war is supposed to be over. You say you want to build a new Northern Ireland. A peaceful Northern Ireland. But how can we build a peaceful Northern Ireland unless you help us to bring his killers to justice? I understand what you're saying, Mr. Gallagher. And my sympathies are with you. But assisting the RUC is only going to alienate hardliners in our community. The very people we have got to keep on board if we're to keep this thing moving forward. This is the reality we face. We cannot jeopardize the peace process. Well, now, they were pleased enough to come and be photographed at the funeral, but what are they actually doing now? I'm sorry, he's busy at the moment. Can I get him to call you back? No, no, look, the question to ask the British and Irish governments are these. Number one, how many officers have been assigned to the inquiry? And number two, has a witness protection plan been offered to the general public? Hello, Father, how are you doing? I don't know, this is very important now. The Gardaí haven't even appealed for witnesses on their website. I'm, so, I'm sorry? Yeah, I, I mean, the one thing that we're not getting here is the one thing that we all want. Those men answering to their crimes in a court of law. That's right. Yeah, but they're just not responding. And you know Victor Barker? He's English. He lost his son. Do you know what he does? He sends letters to the British Prime Minister, Tony Blair. And then he gets these personal replies saying, Dear Victor, best regards to the family, yours ever, Tony. <laughs> you know, and, and uh, I know that's great, isn't it? It's lovely. But, uh, but then he starts to ask questions and he wants meetings and everything like that there and then he gets a reply from a secretary and then he gets a reply from an assistant to the secretary and then it goes to another department. You know what I mean? It's ridiculous. Yeah. Hello? Yeah, absolutely. No, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, yeah. he's busy at the moment. Can I take a message? Well, it would have finally gets so angry, he, he, he sends a photograph of his son over to Tony Blair, blown up. It's a terrible, terrible picture. Absolutely. And do you know what they did, John? They lost it. I swear, I swear to God, they lost it. I mean, it's any wonder the families are so angry. Is it any wonder? I mean, all we're asking for here is that the government pay attention to the promises they make. Look, John, John, just, just hang on a second. I, I, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Patsy. Patsy. That was someone from the BBC. I know this is difficult. They're uh, doing a panorama programme and they want to talk to you about it. I know it's difficult with the phones going on. And um, the Belfast Telegraph rang and that, that interview's at four o'clock, okay? Four? Is it four? That's right. Oh, oh, Stanley. <clears throat> Stanley, I'm in, <clears throat> I'm in the middle of something now. I'll give you a call in five minutes, OK? Bye. I can't do this anymore. But we have to know what happened. I know what happened. I know what happened. Someone killed Aidan, that's what happened. And I don't care about why. Or what or how. Any of it. All I want to know is that he's at peace. 
نظر نظر is carnage. Carnage that was indiscriminate in every way. 29 men, women, children and babies were killed. The bombers were former members of the provisional IRA who opposed their ceasefire. Liam Campbell lives in a comfortable house just a few yards inside the Irish Republic. According to intelligence sources, he's the so-called officer commanding the real IRA. There are two mobile phones whose records on the day of the bombing are of special interest. One of these two phones belonged to this man, Colin Murphy. He said he handed over both his mobile and his foreman's mobile to another builder. That builder was Seamus Daly. We spotted Colin Murphy arriving at this building in Dundalk, which is where we caught up with him. I wonder if you could explain to me why it is that you gave your mobile telephone and the mobile telephone of your foreman to Seamus Daly on the eve of the OMA bombing. I didn't give my phone to anybody. Despite the fact that the police on both sides of the Irish border know the identities of those they believe to have been the bombers, there is no immediate prospect of charges. The absence of prosecutions is an increasing burden for the families of the Oma bombing. Hello? As far as you're concerned, my name's Kevin Fulton. You said you were in the IRA? Thirteen years. So, do you know any of these names? You're missing McEvitt. Mickey McEvitt. He's the one who organized it. He was the quartermaster. He looked after the weapons and all the explosives. He walked out in the IRA after Adams and McGinnis signed the Good Friday Agreement. He took Campbell and the others with him and set up the real IRA. They're not the Ra. They hate the IRA. For selling out, for Good Friday, giving up the arms struggle. So, why did you ring me? I tell you, you're not asking the right question. But what is the right question? You don't get it, do you? They 
như Tây như bài tập bom How did they know? Because I was working for them all along. The army, MI5, or you see. I told them myself I was a mole. I, I, I don't understand. I had a contact in the real IRA. He told me there was something big on. Something spectacular. So I met my RUC handler. Surely, surely they would have done something. Why did they not try to stop it? Did you see any army checkpoints in Oma that day? Were there any soldiers on the street? Look, please, please. Look, we need help. It's very confusing, all this. Accusations by former British spy Kevin Fulton that the intelligence community knew in advance about the OMA bombing have embarrassed the security services and raised questions about the failure to bring prosecutions. There have been calls for the allegations to be investigated by the police ombudsman. Stanley, it's me. It's all over the papers, Michael. I mean, if this is true. Well, they're going to have to answer some questions now. They can't ignore this. We should call a meeting. Okay, well, I'm still away in the south. I have a wee bit more to do. I'll see you later. Michael, pleased to meet you. My name is John White. Mr. White. Well, I'll uh, leave you to talk for a while. <clears throat> OK. Thanks, Ronnie. Cousin. Have you heard of the Gaudi's National Surveillance Unit? No. No, I haven't. Well, we're a secret department. We were uh, keeping tabs on the real IRA for the Irish government. I was working there when they bombed off. I had a source in the real IRA, uh, a good one. He got them their cars, stole them, you know. Anyway, we knew that a car with a bomb was going to be driven to the border. Uh -huh. So what happened? I was told they were going to let it go. What? Deliberately? They said they were going to let it go. Why, why would they do that? Uh, protecting the informants. Maybe they thought a big bomb would discredit the real IRA, get them out of the picture, you know? Maybe they just didn't think it through. No one would get killed. Maybe they just fucked up. Thirty years of chasing shadows, the machine gets lazy, you know? Look, Michael, I'm not saying lots of honest people, police, didn't try their best. They did. But there won't be any prosecutions. Not for Oma. I know, Oma. There have to be. We have to keep the pressure on. Listen. Damn. If you ask me, they made a deal. Now put the guns down, declare a ceasefire, and uh, we won't prosecute. <laughs> You're in the way of the peace process, Michael, and uh, nothing, nothing is going to allow to do that. My God. My God.
Kathy, what are you doing at home? It's the end of term. Oh, yeah, right. You knew I was coming home. I phoned you. Oh, yes, I did. Sorry. Where's Mommy? She's upstairs. Uh, well, she's better off sleeping. She won't get out of bed. She never goes out. She has these days, you know. Who looks after her? Sharon? Sharon. Yeah. Sharon comes over. Look, we're doing okay. Your mommy likes to be on her own, doesn't she? It's true. It's not true. She's too sad to get up. And you're just as bad. Who's looking after you? I'm all right. You look terrible. Really, I'm fine. You both look terrible. Kathy, I've been to a meeting. You're always at a meeting. Every time I've rung, you're at a meeting. Or on TV. Please, stop arguing. What's the use of all this running around? I mean, do you really think they care what you're doing? Do you think they're going to stop the shooting and the bombing just because you gave an interview to the Belfast Telegraph or the BBC?